Neurology quiz number 69. What are the clinical features of cerebral amyloid angiopathy or CAA? CAA is a vasculopathy characterized by deposition of amyloid beta peptide within the leptomeninges and small to medium sized cerebral blood vessels. Degenerative changes follow with wall thinning and rupture. CAA is of two types, sporadic. This is the most common type and the major risk factor is age. There is some evidence that patients with APOE epsilon 2 or epsilon 4 alleles are at greater risk for intracerebral hemorrhage from CAA than the general population. Familial, this type occurs at a younger age than sporadic CAA. It is related to mutations in the amyloid precursor protein or APP gene. Other mutations associated with the familial type include ACES peptide as well as ATTR peptide, etc. This picture shows amyloid deposition in the vessel wall. A is HND staining at high magnification. B shows Congo red stained tissue exhibiting green polarized light and C shows an immunostain which reveals deposited amyloid. Sporadic CAA is strongly age dependent and the prevalence of moderate to severe CAA increases with age. It is usually seen after age 65 and is uncommon in individuals below 60 years. Manifestations of CAA include the following. Number one, intracranial hemorrhage. CAA-related intracranial hemorrhage is low bar and is most common in the posterior or occipital regions, followed by the frontotemporal and parietal lobes, and less commonly in the cerebellum. Central cerebral amyloid angiopathy accounts for only 5 to 10 percent of deep ICH, but constitutes 50 percent of low bar ICH. CAA should be suspected when recurrent or multiple simultaneous cortical hemorrhages occur in older individuals without traditional risk factors for intracerebral hemorrhage. Number two, as CAA also involves the leptomeningeal vessels, it can manifest as convexity subarachnoid hemorrhage or cortical superficial siderosis or CSS on brain MRI. This picture on the left shows a brain MRI with a right parietal low bar hemorrhage and on the right side shows a CT brain which is showing a right frontal low bar hemorrhage. Some patients, especially those with CSS, have a transient focal neurological symptoms called amyloid spells. Symptoms can be positive and seizure-like or negative TIA-like phenomena and can last up to 30 minutes. EG is typically normal, but anti-seizure medications have been reported to be effective. Confusion with TIA and treatment with antithrombotics should be avoided as these agents can predispose to hemorrhage. Number four, CAA can cause cerebral microbleeds or CMVs, which are punctate deposits of hemosiderin due to blood extravasation from diseased microvessels. These are asymptomatic and discovered incidentally on brain imaging. CMBs can also be caused by hypertension. However, those due to hypertension are typically subcortical, while those related to CAA are cortical and most commonly located in the posterior regions of the brain. This figure shows CSS and low bar CMB on brain imaging. These are gradient echo images showing linear hypointensity on the cortical surface on the left, compatible with CSS and multiple focal hypointensities in the posterior brain parenchyma in a low bar location, reflecting CMBs. This figure illustrates the topography of cerebral micro microbleeds in CAA and hypertension. CAA preferentially affects the cerebral cortex and the gray-white matter junction, 
while hypertensive arteriopathy typically affects the small deep arterial perforators. Number five, a rare subtype of CAA is CAA-related inflammation or amyloid beta-related angiitis, also called ABRA. This is characterized by perivascular inflammatory changes. It can manifest with acute onset headache, seizures, comma, focal deficits, and acute cognitive decline. MRI reveals confluent white matter hyperintensities and CMBs. Patients respond to immunosuppression with IV steroids or other agents. Number six, CAA can be associated with cognitive impairment. This is partly explained by coexistent Alzheimer's disease pathology. However, cognitive impairment can also be related to recurrent strokes as well as severe white matter lesions secondary to CAA. Diagnosis. The modified Boston criteria are utilized for the diagnosis of CAA and these are classified as follows, definite CAA, which requires a full post-mortem examination, probable CAA with supporting pathology, probable CAA without supporting pathology, and possible CAA. This slide shows the various imaging findings in CAA, which include convexity subarachnoid hemorrhage, cortical superficial siderosis, cere cerebral microbleeds, intracerebral hemorrhage, white matter hyperintensities, and enlarged perivascular spaces. Management. Management is based on the presentation. Acute management of patients with intracerebral hemorrhage is similar to other intracerebral hemorrhage. Attention to blood pressure and intracranial pressure is important. Surgery does not significantly affect mortality or outcome. Mortality ranges from 10 to 30 percent and the best prognosis is seen in patients with retained consciousness and smaller hematomas, less than 50 ml. Hemorrhage associated with CAA can be recurrent. Because of this risk, antiplatelet agents and anticoagulants should be avoided in the absence of strong indications. There is some evidence to show that control of hypertension may be associated with decreased risk of hemorrhage. Amyloid spells can respond to anti-seizure medications, while ABRA responds to immunosuppressive agents such as corticosteroids.